Hi everyone, welcome to Murka Creations. Today I will work with wood. I have received a beautiful wooden piece from my neighbor, been to the flea market and picked up another beautiful wooden sculpture piece and I bought a few things to add to it and all that together will turn into a beautiful piece for my wall in my living area to remind me what month we're in and what date it is. So stay tuned for this. So this is the material I want to use. I have this wooden plank and this beautiful piece I got from my neighbor to be a top piece and this little smaller one that will sit on top of a uh, the wood strip like that on the bottom and then I try to measure and see how much of that wood plank I need mark it and then cut it to size with my mitre saw I have to turn it because the mitre saw is not big enough and there we have it perfect next thing I will do is to cut the wood strips to size to turn into a beautiful frame so I cut one side in a 45 degree angle and now I have marked the other one and cut that to size with the mitre saw and then I need to see how much I need to cut off from the next one I need to mark where that head piece is going This video is part of the What Would You Make Challenge hosted by Connie's Woodshop and DIYs and Rustic and Lace DIY. And the co host for this month is Craft Away with May. I have links down in my description box to the channel so you can go and check them out later. And there you can also find a link to the playlist of this challenge for more wood decor ideas. I need to round the ends of those wood strips right there to match that head piece. And on the upper side where the head piece goes a little bit in I want wood strips as well but I need to cut tiny tiny pieces. And I will use my scroll saw for that. I have marked out exactly how much I need to cut and there will be just tiny pieces. I didn't cut them at the right size directly so I had to go in with my belt sander to get them the exact size. Now I am measuring where to cut off a little bit of that wood strip on the bottom to fit that molding. So I place it in the center and then I mark where it ends like that and then I take my chisel and hammer and just work my way along that wood strip and take my pliers and uh, break off that little piece and now it fits perfectly in that mold I'm sanding off the wood plank all over back and front with a fine grit sandpaper and then it's time to stain it and I have a dark brown stain that I actually found in the garage and I put on plenty of it just on the front and I put on two coats and then I went on to my pieces that I've already cut out and I started painting them with my greyish go-to color that I love so much nowadays because I want to paint the pieces before I put them together because I don't want to go and paint and spill onto that stained area 
so that's why I'm painting them now. I have put that mold and the wood strip together with just some nails and some wood glue. So they're holding on to each other very well. So I put on two coats. If you're new to my channel, hi! I am Marika and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, trash to treasure, renovation of my home and I even do some pottery and some painting. Please join me, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join my YouTube family. And while those pieces are drying I will start with the small signs that will indicate which month it is so I have another wood strip that I'm cutting to size it's just a plain wood strip just sanding off the edges like that and I have of course 12 of them one for each month of the year I'm putting on the same stain as I did on the wood plank two coats of this dark brown stain I wanted an even darker surface so I decided to go in with my black stain one coat on both the wood plank and then on the signs as well wiping off the excess with just a cloth perfect surface now now it's time to assemble everything everything has dried putting on wood glue put it in place and then just use my nail gun to attach it like that make sure it's in place work my nail gun And the smaller pieces beside that top piece, wood glue on, put them in place, take away that uh, top piece so I have room to attach it with my nail gun and put the other little piece in place and nail it into place. I put the top piece in place as well and I used some wood glue and then I screwed it into place from the back. And now I'm putting on spackle between the wood strips and the wood plank as you see me do here to get a very nice finish and where the wood strips meet and while that is drying I'm working on my numbers so I have figured out how large I need them so I'm making rectangles here on an MDF board same size so I know exactly how large to make my numbers then I cut it with my Japanese hand saw in more workable pieces like that now I'm sketching out my numbers and I'm using just a round plastic lid and another round piece and there is my number three and I have a number two going on here I actually ended up uh, making the numbers slightly shorter it will not be a great difference but a centimeter or so because I thought they were a little too long for me but you can see approximately how I did them anyways. And now I'm at the miter saw again, cutting out the rectangles where I have uh, sketched out my numbers.
Next thing I do is to drill holes in my pieces like this, the number 8 for example. I have marked the center so I know where exactly to drill. And I'm taking a drill bit that is big enough. And these little rounds, you can use them for something else, so I will save them. And I do that on all numbers that have uh, round circles and needs a drilling. Now I'm back to my scroll saw and will cut out the shapes of my numbers. So I will have a 0 to 9 and then one extra 1 and one extra of the number 2. And this is the number zero and I'm using just a hand saw to get out that empty space in the center. And it was a bit difficult but I managed. Next step is to go to my belt sander and get them nice and smooth and rounded because I'm not a scroll saw master so the edges were a bit wobbly but nothing I could not fix with my belt sander. Next step is to smooth out the edges where I could not reach with my belt sander by hand with the rasp with the sandpaper. They're looking good, don't they? I'm proud of myself. <laughs> the numbers will hang on uh, nails to show the date. So I'm marking here, trying to figure out, so they will hang straight and mark out where I need to drill the holes. And then I just take my drill and make the holes like that. Now I'm painting my numbers with the same greyish color as I used for the frame. And I applied two coats here, back and front, even though the back will not show. I have smoothed out the sides of where I have speckled with the sandpaper and now I am painting everything with the greyish color to make it blend in with the, the rest that I have painted and I will paint the back as well just to have a nice finish all throughout. Time to paint the months on my signs and I'm using a gold paint with a little bit of black in it to get that antique look and I'm writing in French so that was June and now we're on July Juillet and I applied two coats thicken the letters a little bit on the second coat as you see me do here Now I'm going in on the frame and on the texture on the top and bottom molding, dry brushing with this antique gold. 
just enough so I'm happy highlighting the texture make it look perfect and I will do that on the numbers as well now I'm putting on highlights and shadows on my signs on the text because I didn't think the text popped enough now it looks a lot better now I'm making holes in my signs so I can hang them up one on each side like that and the most important thing here is to have uh, the measurement right in between the holes so they will all fit on the nails next thing is to put the nails in place and make sure that they are straight so everything will look good here I am varnishing my numbers and my signs just the one coat with a satin finished varnish now I'm putting the hanger into place I have put the, some what do you call them loop screws and now I'm just putting a tight piece of nautical rope in between make tight knots and the last thing is to put a varnish on the whole piece as well to protect the colors and here I am doing a quick makeover of a basket I started out by dry brushing it but thought that didn't look very good so I ended up putting on a full cover of that grayish color I will use this basket here to put in the numbers and um, the signs the ones I don't use for the moment and here I have a cute ribbon that I just put across it's actually a Christmas ribbon but I thought it was so cute and we're not that far away from Christmas so I went with it just putting on some hot glue at the end if you like this video and videos like this consider subscribing maybe share with a friend and hit that like button as well it will help my channel to grow and I can spend more time creating inspirational content for you my aim is to upload one video per week And on the bottom of the basket I just put in some burlap ribbon fold it to get a nice finish and attach it with some hot glue Et voila here it is in my living space looking beautiful and it says 22nd of October I really love this piece so tell me what you think I think it fits into my decor I think it's elegant both practical and beautiful leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think And right below on the staircase I have the little basket with the extra numbers and the extra months
If you are inspired and you want more wood decor ideas straight away, head on over to my description box and hit that link to the playlist of this challenge. Just click and enjoy. Thank you so very much for watching. See you soon again in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye.